Hi guys, it's me, Tiffany. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Ascending with Tiff Talks 22. I feel like I have been out of commission for way too long. Um, but there have been some things going on, so that's what I am going to talk about today. So, um, was it last Tuesday? Uh, not last Tuesday. It might have been the 25th, whenever the 25th was, the 25th of August. My baby started feeling like kind of bleh. I say my baby, he's a big boy, but he also has Down syndrome and he has the medical history like of an older person. <laughs> Just because, not not the same illnesses necessarily, but just how thick it will, his files are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, he was not feeling well. He just started kind of being a really lethargic and slowing down quite a bit. And so uh, that is not like him. If you know him, his energy is always pretty amazing. So it's like, uh-oh, what's wrong? And we have not been sick in so long so of course when this pops up the concern is through the roof okay for me and usually once we go to uh any hospital or doctor their concern is high as well so anyway i was like okay we're not gonna just run to the hospital Everybody gets sick. I'm thinking maybe sinus infection, you know, something like that. Uh, So, he started being a little lethargic. Then I noticed, okay, he's developing a temperature. Uh, We started with the echinacea, the elderberry, um, you know, homeopathic treatments. Also, Tylenol, just to reduce his fever. And uh, lots of fluids because he was just kind of throwing up a little bit like if he would eat something it would like not come right back up but come up eventually and so we stopped making him eat and like after a day or so and so we just started uh pouring liquids into him you know what i mean like drinking lots of water lots of electrolytes propels specifically um and that's what we started to do. And so it's like, okay, you know how men can be. Men can be big babies. <laughs> Even when, you know, they just have a little cold. It's like the end of the world. So I really thought and was hoping, I think, that he was being a little dramatic. But because his fever would not go down and stay down, it was it became a little concerning. So, because of his medical history, of course, I started to think uh, maybe he's having a digestive issue that I can't see. And so, one morning, he was just like, I just don't feel well, my I feel dizzy, like shaky, is how he described it. So, I was like, okay, we're going to take you to this hospital. Part of me feels a little bad because um, even though I think I took him fairly quick, quickly, it was probably like, what, four days later. I took him uh, fairly quickly, and I think I attacked it from a homeopathic standpoint fairly quickly. I still was kind of like not happy with the fact that he wanted to go to the hospital, you know? But also the fact that he did want to, and I know for us, the anxiety that is attached to hospital visits I felt like it was really necessary. You know, it was something that he really needed to do. And so uh, we get to the hospital. And, you know, with all of these um, COVID restrictions and whatnot, it's like, um, I don't even know if I'm going to get to stay with you or not. But um, he speaks, you know, he talks, but his speaking is not very clear. Of course, he can't give them his medical history like I can. And so, uh, it was necessary for me to stay. So that was a plus right there. Um, 
and his anxiety, you know, I think he felt like he may have been coming down with COVID because I don't know if you saw on a previous post, if you follow me on social media, he'd already told my mom, you know, that he didn't want to die. He didn't want to die. So yeah, we are no, no news, no news. We're not watching it. <laughs> no, no fear mongering. No, um, stinking thinking reinforced by media okay we not doing that but uh like i said he had watched the news way too much with my mom and so um i think even that's been curbed just a little bit so i'm grateful for that but anyway um so we get to the hospital and i'm then they asking you know any previous surgeries underlying conditions and that's when it's like oh lord so i feel like i almost i i don't know i don't hate to talk about his his medical history because it is an amazing testimony you know but um the anxiety that comes with it from being in the er in a position whoo don't cry i'm sorry Whew, see, still get emotional in a position that we had been in so many times. Um, the anxiety was very, very real. And that's the same thing that happened uh, in the triage when they were, um, you know, trying to assess the level of his um, concern, the seriousness of it or whatever. Uh, I got emotional. I had to like suck it up for just a minute just so I can get through explaining to him, to them, all the things that he had gone through from a medical standpoint. Anyway, so we sucked it up and they took him right back, of course, which I expected. Um, And he is so weird because he didn't really have a fever at that time. He was just super lethargic and because of their his, his history, you know. And so they took him back. Of course, they did uh, the COVID test with the swab up his nose. Y'all, when I tell y'all this kid, he, he amazes me just all the time. But um, he took that test. You know how you've seen videos. This is another thing. Guard what you watch because I'm telling you. Like, it was not that serious. My kid did not flinch, did not bat an eye. And she didn't. Also, she also didn't dig up into his eye sockets, you know, <laughs> like with the swab either. Like, but, um, yeah, it was super quick, super painless, those things. And so they just started him on an IV, which is what? Electrolytes, which we'd already been doing, just not intravenously. So uh, that was a plus. Um, and what else did they do? They gave him a medicine that helps with nausea. And other than that, it was like, wait for, you know, results or whatever. But in the meantime, of course, they needed to draw blood, which is, if you follow me on social media, uh, the picture that you, that's, I think that's on my personal page. So maybe you guys didn't see that, but, um, that's the picture that you saw. It's like four of them around him trying to figure out where they can stick him um they felt in his hands both arms it was just a deja vu nightmare for me so i kept having to step outside because i did not want him to see my concern you know my anxiety um so yeah i kept having to step out of the room like i'm just gonna run to the bathroom yeah, I was running to the bathroom, crying, cleaning my face up, and running back with a smile. You know, <laughs> that happened probably two or three times, parents. It's, it's what we do, right? And so, um, get back to the room, and uh, I think she allowed him to have juice or whatever. It didn't take them very long to decide that they were probably going to keep him. There is a little thing that they attach to your finger when you go called the pulse oximeter. And so, uh, I think they just call it a pulse ox for short. And, uh, yeah. So, immediately, I mean, I am just transported back in time, y'all. Because when I tell you we used to live at the hospital in various times, 
we absolutely lived at the hospital. And so I became very, very, very good at a lot of these things. I became knowledgeable in just those things alone. But then I also went to school to be a medical assistant because I was going to be a nurse after um, me and Gabe got through a lot of his health experiences and whatnot. And so I ended up not doing that because I absolutely learned too much. And I decided that the medical field was not something that my heart would allow me to be a part of. One, because uh, insurance and just big pharma, it is, to me, it's, it's, not, it's not okay. It's not okay. We, I remember watching a video in class, um, and they were showing us Skid Row and whatnot, and I was just devastated. How can you take um, an oath to be helpful and to help people and then charge them so much that they can't afford the help, so you put them in a cab and have them placed on the street in their hospital gown, still sick, like it was just heartbreaking. So I pretty it was a real effort for me at that point to get through that that school because yeah, it just didn't match my my heart's desire. Anyway, I got off a little bit, but it's all relative. <laughs> anyway, so um they decided they were going to admit him because via the pulse ox, it just tells you how much oxygen is circulating through your body through your blood how how you're breathing basically and those numbers uh typically should be a hundred right are definitely in the higher 90s but his was going from like 88 87 to like 95 96 up and down like that and because of his medical history again with his heart issues and whatnot which are resolved by the way let me add um post-surgery uh he his he was de is what they call it and so uh we had to be admitted i was not happy i think though most of that is because of like i said the previous anxiety that we have that i have attached to his hospital visits so um yeah we ended up staying and instead of having me to sleep in a chair, they um, pulled in another bed for me. Y'all, when I tell you, I feel like the nurses just absolutely, ugh, easy for me to say, absolutely do less <laughs> when I'm there. Because um, they brought this bed in, y'all, and just parked it. I say they parked it. They didn't put the brakes down. They didn't plug it in, so there was no up or down, none of that. So, you know, your girl, she is uh, initiative defined. So I went ahead and plugged everything up so that I could at least move it. Of course, I had to lock it. Yeah, I moved it by my damn self. Like, it, that part was kind of insane, but hey, whatever. It's a free bed. It's I'm not their patient, etc. And so um, they came back. Well, while we were in the ER, before we got to the, the room, the COVID unit is what they called it, which was pretty quiet, gratefully. Um, before that, she came in there and was telling me the things that they were going to start him on, which were like zinc and different vitamins and whatnot, and an antibiotic. And I thought, okay, what's the antibiotic for? Because the virus is viral. And antibiotics are for bacteria. And so she's just working. Mind you, we had already seen the doctor who let us know that we were going to be admitted and everything because he did test positive for COVID. And I was like, well, damn. He said, so I said, well, damn, what does that mean for me? And he said, um, well, you can just assume you have it. So you need to isolate, etc." Um, That's tough to hear, but... You know, I felt fine, so I wasn't really tripping on it. Because I'm like, if he got it, I have to have it, right? Because this kid, y'all, I woke up one morning um, after he had decided to sleep with me. I woke up one morning, and literally, he was probably like a foot away from my face. 
<laughs> where part of me, this was before we had decided to go to the hospital, was like, say, dude, uh-uh, why the hell are you breathing in my face? <laughs> like, I put my back. <laughs> <laughs> I put my mask on so quick, honey. Like, back the hell up, son. Why are you in my face like that? If you sick, whatever you got. Like, why are you breathing at me? <laughs> so, yeah. So, that was the mood. But anyway, so the doctor was like, yeah, you can pretty much assume you have it. And I already felt his judgment because he was like, is there any reason you guys haven't gotten the vaccination? I didn't even want to have that argument with him because you know me and my fire energy. It would have been an argument. I was just like, yeah, no, nah, not really. You know, we just didn't do it. And he, he accepted it at, as that and we left it there. Um, so later, that was the ER doctor. So later the hospital doctor came in to confirm for me that they were going to go ahead and admit him. And he did say, you know, um, it's basically for observation because of of you know his medical history or whatever so we just want to watch him make sure he's not desatting too much etc and that was all fine and good so the nurse comes and she's you know refilling his uh iv she changed his bag or whatever for his electrolytes and she's like um and there's this steroid and it was like whoa 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 wait just a minute you know this is, guys, where I implore you to listen, but to also make them explain to you what they are doing. What I know about his previous use of steroids is that steroids have a side effect, especially if you use them long term. And so I was like, what do we need a st steroid for at this point? What's this for? And so um, she was just like, well... You know, it's just a treatment for uh, COVID or whatever. And she said if if for anti-inflammatory purposes or whatever. And so then she, I said, well, steroids have side effects. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want, like he is not coughing at all at this point. But I know that from what I've heard, coughing is a major uh, symptom of, of this disease so why the hell are you gonna give him a drug a prescription drug that creates a symptom that he doesn't have so that's when she also informed me that he was beginning to show because they did x-ray chest x-ray cat scan all that stuff um he was beginning to show signs of uh present signs of pneumonia as well it was starting in his lungs which is why I said, okay, so that makes so much more sense. The steroid makes sense. The antibiotic makes sense. That makes much more sense. I said, so why didn't the doctor tell me that part? But the, it just was, for me, was an example of how you don't just let these people do things to you. Make them explain what the hell they are doing. This is a problem that I used to have with my sister. It was like, you know what? No, I'm going with you to the doctor i'm going with you to this hospital because she'll go and be like well he put me on this and that what the hell for why i don't feel like we are afraid to ask questions and i am not cut from that cloth i want to know what you intend to do to me and what the purpose of that action is and um, nine times out of 10, by the time you tell me this is what you want to do, I've already began to look up uh, side effects and symptoms or whatever, <laughs> if it's outside of what I already know, you know? So anyway, that calmed me down quite a bit. It was like, okay, go ahead and do that stuff. But it just made me think of how many people come to the doctor and just let them do things to you without telling you what they're doing or why or what the purpose of it is, you know? So that, that was definitely my only complaint. Well, yeah, almost my only complaint. <laughs> so then they move us to this COVID unit. Mind you, at this point, we've been here since sunup. It is probably about six something in the evening. I'm getting uh, hangry, you know, hungry, angry. Like, what's up? I need to eat something too. Because at this point, they had brought Gabe a tray, so it was time for him to eat, and he was tolerating things. So that was really positive. That was really good. Um, we get to the unit. We get settled in, 
And my mom brought me some snacks and some other things for Gabriel that I had asked for. And, uh, you know, me and my oblivion, I was just trying to walk out to go get it. And she's like, ah, 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 you know, we, we not doing no back and forth. Okay. First of all, you talking to an adult. So check your tone. Second of all, y'all tell me what the rules are. I said, cause I've been here all day and I know what, know what she's bringing is something that I need and my son needs. So somebody gonna have to go get it, you know, which is what they did. And they returned with the, with his things or whatever. And so then I was able to settle in and just kind of get comfortable or whatever. And we just kind of wrote it out overnight. Uh, but while we were in there, of course, the damn alarms, because he kept desatting, but not really. He was just going like 89, 88 for a few seconds, and then he would go back up. So the alarms just were so freaking annoying. There is no such thing as rest if you've ever had to stay in a hospital. There's no such thing as actually resting in a hospital um, because of all the noise and the constant checks, check-ins and all those things. And so... Um, eventually it it probably was like three some in the morning where i had to ask his sweet nurse natalie like hey what can we do about this because i'd already looked at the monitor it would not let me adjust the volume if you if i paused the alarm uh it only paused it for two minutes at a time uh which was usually enough for him to reposition himself or um, get his breathing together. But part of what was happening was he was so anxious. I think he was just like, I'm just focusing on my breathing, just trying to breathe. And I'm like, I think you focusing so hard. It's causing other things, you know? So I finally got him to kind of relax where he wasn't just watching numbers and waiting for beeps and watching his stomach move and those things. So I think a lot of it is, um, also anxiety related, you know? It is, but it's hard to stay calm in chaos. You know, it's hard to stay calm in uncertainty. So, uh, we definitely got to put that in practice just a little bit. Uh, of course I had my positive meditation music playing, but that was hard to hear because they had the air filter going in there to, uh, you know, pull the air out of the room. But anyway, um, so we ended up shutting that down. But, uh, eventually like three or four something in the morning, it's like, Natalie, when these alarms go off, y'all not running in here to see what's wrong with him. So, and y'all can see at the front desk what is going on with these alarms. Nobody's actually alarmed by the fact that they're sounding. So at this point, they are just a disturbance fix it. What can we do? So she lowered the, I would say the trigger number for the alarms. And we were able to sleep for like an hour <laughs> uninterrupted by alarms. So that was awesome. That was amazing. Um, but seriously, think about it. If there is no reason, there's no alert for you. You're not running in here. So you're not concerned about the alarm. What is the purpose of it? Just to disturb. So how the hell can I get better and relax and my body do what it needs to do if I'm being disturbed by these alarms every few seconds, which are not alarming to the staff? Because like I said, nobody's reacting except the patient and his mom, right? So that was very helpful for her to fix that. Um, then they busted in about four something in the morning. This young lady, this phlebotomist who was a superstar, I should have asked for her name because um, when I tell you she went in, she was like, I need to get some blood. And I'm like, why you can't use the IV? She's like, it's been in too long. Too long. It's only been a day. She's like, well, I'm going to be quick, you know. And I mean, she was so quick. She didn't have to uh, maneuver or palpate his arm too frequently, any of that stuff. It was just quick in and out. He literally, you know, was woken up out of his sleep. He was like, ugh. And went right back to sleep. So I definitely should have gotten her name. And I'd let her know how amazing that was. She's like, it's what I do all day. Like, yeah. So there's a huge difference in a phlebotomist and a person that draws blood. Okay? Because <laughs> phlebotomists tend to be skilled because it is what they do every day. So the picture that you saw that created so much anxiety for me with them all being around his arm like that. Like, they literally had to get 
the ultrasound machine that they use to listen to baby heartbeats, they had to get one of those to find a vein to stick in the ER. Like, yeah, blood drawing is not their ministry. They should most definitely be housing some phlebotomist. But anyway, so the next morning, the doctor comes in and he's like, you know, I don't really think he's he's doing really good. He'd been eating. By that time, he'd had uh, breakfast. He'd had dinner. He'd had lunch. He tolerated it. No throwing up. Um, they they gave him his antibiotic that morning orally. Um, they gave him his vitamins orally. And so the doctor was like, you know, I think we can let y'all go home. I said, we think that too. <laughs> he said, um, you know, because... All of this stuff, you guys can do at home. I, and I said, it's not like we have a pulse ox at home. So when he, if and when he does desat, how the hell will we know? We won't know. You know what I mean? Um, like, it's like, because once that would happen, the number would go right back up. It's just a matter of breathing deeply, consciously breathing deeply, etc. And so uh, that's what we did. I mean, that's what he agreed to. And so we just went home and... Uh, it was a lot. I think that there was so much relief for me in him being released that, and, and then of course being disturbed the entire day and night, I hadn't really had any rest. So I definitely had to run around and pick up all of these prescriptions and medications and whatnot. And then it was finally like, okay, now I can go home and get some sleep myself. Like, I think I slept for the day, you know? Um, of course I had a couple moments in the car cause it's like, whoa, like that could have been so much worse. And I was so grateful that it was not so much worse. Um, I still have not, not gotten tested. I, my appointment is scheduled for Tuesday, so I'll go do that on Tuesday. But from a health standpoint, I feel amazing. So then my question is how and why do I feel so amazing? It's not a question, it's a reflection, and it's filled with gratitude, right? But then I was thinking, what is the difference? I believe my diet is a difference. I believe my level of activity is a difference. I believe that um, my lifestyle just makes the difference. And I'm so grateful for that, and I wanted to pass that on to you guys. If you guys are eating a lot of processed foods if you guys live a very sedentary life and i don't even feel like i'm super active but i uh definitely try to stay physically healthy you know what i mean and moving and i think all of those things contribute to the fact that i am not sick today i think all of those things for gabriel even though he definitely eats way worse than me but i think it all contributes to the fact that he bounced back from this thing so quickly. His um, antibiotic regimen is only for five five days. So we have like two more days left of those. And then the vitamin regimen, he has most of them for uh, 10 days. So five additional days after that. And then the there's like a gummy, a gummy vitamin for like a month, 30 days. And it's just really a multivitamin. It's an over-the-counter thing. And so, yeah, I just want to implore you guys to um, be mindful of what you actually ingest and consume. I want to implore you guys to be mindful of what you actually congest and assume, not assume, consume (laughs) on a daily basis. Um, And just to take care of yourself from a physical standpoint because that immunity your immune system makes all the difference in recovery and I am not a doctor this is not medical advice I do not claim by any means to have the answers nor all of the answers but I know that I am not sick. I could be one of those people that is just asymptomatic. We'll find out tomorrow. But whatever it is, it's working for me, you know? It's working. And we don't take elderberry and echinacea on a regular basis by no means <laughs> at all. And I still haven't I haven't been taking them since he's been back. 
Um, but a definitely a daily vitamin is very important. And then your activity levels and then the things that you consume. I'm definitely, definitely more committed now to not consuming meat at all. Um, and I say meat, I mean like beef, sausage, pork, those things, even chicken. Um, I definitely have diced chicken in my salad sometimes, but it's really on a small, small scale meat, meat consumption. Uh, and you know, that's to each his own, do what, what feels good for you or feels right for you. Plant-based would definitely not be for everybody. But I just wanted to share with you guys our testimony. Gabriel is doing better. He is restless. He is ready to get out of the house. He's ready to move around. He feels like he has so much energy. He's like, what am I going to do with this energy? He'll stand up and stretch and just kind of walk in place. Like, <laughs> he is restless. But um, we got a few more days of isolation and then we'll be free or whatever but also i'm gonna get tested tomorrow so i just wanted to give the rundown this is where i've been this is where my concerns have been this is where my heart has been um this is where my meditations have been just focusing on positive energy good health and taking care of my family um, of course we live with my mom and my mom is uh fully vaccinated which is probably why her health has not suffered as well and so yeah we're all good over here we are all good over here i just want to implore you guys to take care of yourselves thank you so much to everybody who sent positive energy and prayers our way they were definitely 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 felt in a major way in a major way don't cry, Tiffany. <laughs> Y'all, I be having to stop myself. It's it's so much gratitude in my heart for that and just for health, you know? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this session, guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I am going to get back. I don't know if on a schedule, but I'm definitely going to get back to consistently posting. Um, but as you can hear, I've just been a little sidetracked. But thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned. Um, as, yeah, I am not out of this podcast game. I'll be back. I love you guys so much. Have a great day, week, month, whenever you hear this. Okay? Bye-bye.